Welcome to episode seven of Side Out with VNS. Again, we're the Bali video pod, reaching out and engaging our fellow Bali nerds in Nova Scotia and beyond. I'm John Elliott, the development director for Volleyball Nova Scotia, and my co-host is Megan Conroy, the technical director for Volleyball Nova Scotia. Uh, we got our matching clothes on, our uniforms again. Got our it's Volleyball Pride Nova Month. Nova it is Pride Month. Um, just repping our, you know, Volleyball Nova Scotia's inclusivity. Um, and today we're excited to talk with two amazingly awesome guests. It's us. Yay! <laughs> we're going to interview ourselves. Uh, so thank you guys for uh, all you people that are watching for joining us. Uh, today we're going to be talking about coaching resources. Um, and there is so many out there. I know what you're thinking. We always have a two-hour podcast. So we've really tried to trim it down. We're just going to share a few uh, between the two of us. Um, drop some nuggets on you guys. See if it's something that you guys enjoy. If you're listening to the YouTube recording of the conversation, uh, we'll have time links, as always, down in the video description um, for each coaching resource that we present. And we'll also share how to access or where to find each resource in the description. So uh, if it's a website link, it'll be down there. You can find it all in our description. Um, again, we're truly going to try our best to keep this under an hour, but based on how we've done in our first six episodes, <laughs> the, odds, the odds are not in our favor. We'll try. Uh, but true to form, we're going to start with we always try to have a little bio on our, uh, our guests and no, Megan, I did not put a bio together for you if you were just a little nervous there for a second. Um, <laughs> but we are going to do a little lightning round. Um, Megan doesn't know what the, the questions are, not that they're going to be really hard, um, but they should be pretty hilarious. Uh, so I'll ask you, you can go first and I'll just answer second. And, and I might okay. actually stumble because I haven't thought about the answers to most of these questions. <laughs> Perfect. Authentic. I'm ready. Okay. Favorite movie? Oh, Bed Knobs and Broomsticks, Disney movie. Okay, never heard of it. Um, it's tied for me, and Megan already knows what they are. Top Gun, Blue Crush. Blue Crush might be first. <laughs> it's awesome. it's a tough toss up. I, I tell you. Um, favorite spectator sport? Oh, diving. Why? Uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I did a, I used to dive little nugget first nugget of the episode uh, I used to dive back in the day and uh, I wasn't I don't think I was that great at it but I definitely got an appreciation for it and uh, just the athleticism the artistic piece the you get into like pairs and the symmetry it's just it's all pretty uh, pretty precise so I have a huge appreciation for it pairs diving is pretty cool um, oh yeah my favorite spectator sport I'm gonna go with uh, soccer, so like Premier League soccer, I uh, kind of fall, fell in love with that and all the intricacies of 11 people running around on a field instead of six people running around on a volleyball court. Yeah, I think, um, I think I've seen you wearing the uh, Wanderers uh, ref apparel uh, around the office. Yeah, I'm not crazy like some of our fans, Tyler Simmons, Adam Spurl, they're there in the kitchen <laughs> uh, setting off flares. I'm over in the, the family section, you know. <laughs> uh, but it's still amazing. Go Wanderers. Um, favorite food? Mm. Toss up between nachos and tacos. Uh, I'm going to go ramen, as Megan knows. Oof. We've fallen in love with that recently. Um, favorite karaoke song, if you just got to give her. Mm -hmm. uh, Be With You by Mr. Big. All right. Can respect that. Anything that John Bon Jovi sings. Oof. His entire discussion. Yeah, you asked. Well, yeah. Anything, I got it. I will not do it right now. Um, favorite pump up song, either now or back in the day? Oh, gosh. Uh, back in the day. Uh, oh, gosh. I actually listened to my like retro warm up CD in my car the other day. Yes, my car still has a CD player it's from 2007. Uh, there was a lot of Spice Girls content in there. Uh, some. DJ Earthworm remixes, care of uh, Krista Parsons, and uh, and back those those kinds of jams were were right up our alley. I don't I don't even I can't even give you a specific song. Yeah, I don't even know what I listened to back in the day, but CDs weren't around. It was tapes. Made my oh. own tape remix and the little tapes. Uh, made your own uh, mixtape. Um, we won't talk of that. I'm gonna go shout out Patty Murray, uh, Malcolm. Or Mac Miller's Knock Knock, which has made many an appearance on video highlight tapes. Um, 
As a head coach, standing up or sitting down? Mm. Uh, circa Joe, like five or six years ago, it would have been standing for sure. Uh, I think I'm getting older and uh, the player in me is like rescinding back into the darkness. So I, I think I said a little more, but kind of might depend on what my team needs from me at that time in terms of energy. Playing both sides of the fence. Um, I also agree in terms of what your team needs, uh, but I think I've definitely become more of a sitting down person. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely try to avoid like standing up when I'm nervous or standing up when the game's tight and then sitting down when it's all good because like, what's, what's the optics of that? Yeah. You know, if your team's not playing well, you just go sit on the bench and cross your arms and like look disinterested. Yeah. yeah. Not a great confidence builder in a tough moment. <laughs> There's a nugget. Um, Favorite skill or position to coach? Only one. Uh, I, I somehow have a love for, for working with passers, and I wasn't a very good passer, so maybe that's why. Uh, but, yeah, I would say passing. I might answer two. That's probably illegal after I said one. Uh, I'm going to say – well, I'll, I'll say two, but they're tied. So, like, setting or, like, offense – uh mm -hmm. and definitely always wasn't that way i think it's something i had to learn as a coach it wasn't something i did as a player and i've become pretty in love with the intricacies of moving people around it's pretty cool um favorite warm-up drill if you, you as an athlete or as a coach that you've run uh you get a max oh, of two as, here okay as an athlete it was uh we called it back row game which was a really simple just like ball came in three versus three back row rotate sometimes when the ball went over the net, like pretty simple. And I guess as a coach, I'm along the same lines and just like anything short court, mini games, one V one, two V two. Those are, those are my favorites. It gets the energy going right away. Tons of contacts, makes them think depending on what parameters you put in. Definitely a go-to. Uh, I'm probably going to go a little bit more immature. It's probably not the right word for it, but um, <laughs> hot dog tag. Um, so good yeah you know if you get tagged you gotta jump up and down screaming i need my buns and then two people have to come on either side of you as the buns to your hot dog to unfreeze you um so great yeah amazing second one also uh in the in the physical education tag department um it's it's partner tag and you can do like any type of movement you want but my favorite is olympic speed walking is the only way you can chase someone or run away from someone and it just turns into a laugh fest of, uh, you know, two minutes. And it's actually really hard. Shout out to our Olympic speed walkers. Um, I think if you, if you had asked me what your favorite warm-up drill is, that would have been what I had guessed. It. Yeah. It's always skipping and then side shuffle and then an <laughs> Olympic speed walk. Unpredictable. Last one. I'm setting you up for this. Polo or not polo? Oh, no polo. Oh, God. Megan is very anti-polo shirt, uh, um, and she might have turned the tide for me. Um, I will go not polo as well, as long as I can find, uh, you know, a good, like, sport performance long sleeve or short yeah. sleeve that's, that's presentable. Um, yeah. But I'll, I'll sneak a polo in every now and then. All right. Um, um, can't believe you brought polos into the episode. So good. <laughs> yeah, pol polos aren't, aren't that great in hindsight. Um, all right. So we're talking – we're talking coaching resources. And if you've listened to any of our other episodes or, or watched them, you've probably heard um, a couple of these maybe like messages before. Uh, so just before we get started, a couple things for us is um, there's definitely more than one way to do things. And you know, in a lot of ways of life, but like definitely volleyball, whether it's how to teach a skill, the intricacies within a skill, there's different systems. Um, where you start players, whether it's middle leading set or setter leading middle, there's a lot of different ways out there. So uh, just keep that in mind when we're, we're presenting these things that a lot of these things can be like, hey, here's the greatest drill in the world, but it's like, it's only great if it's helpful for you in your context. Um, definitely, uh, we believe in growth mindset and continuous learning. Like it's, it doesn't matter how young or old you are, what gender or age groups you're coaching. Um, I truly believe that any athlete out there deserves to have a coach that's interested in their sport and interested in providing a cool experience for athletes. And I mean, just like a lot of things in our world, volleyball is always changing. There's always 
you know, different things coming out that can help provide that cool experience for athletes. So, um, yeah, got to always be growing. Always be growing. It's not ABC, it's ABG. Quote it. Um, I'm going to say just have an open mind when you're seeking out information. So what I mean by that is just because someone's coaching a higher level doesn't mean that their work or their method is like gospel and like has to be is right or has to be copied. Um, and at the same time, just because someone's maybe hasn't coached a long time or is coaching a younger age group or a less competitive level or team, it doesn't mean they don't have incredible ideas that uh, can spark something really cool in your own coaching. So again, that growth mindset, like the nuggets can come from anywhere, from anyone at any time, uh, be ready for it. And uh, the last one is just always be thinking of how can information be of my personal benefit or how can it benefit the group I'm currently working with? So context is everything. If I'm working with a 13U team and then I go on a, a website that has like an NCAA national championship coach doing like a six on six drill that like they say won them the national championship. It doesn't mean that I immediately have to go do that with in whatever my context is like 13 year olds. It's, it's like, maybe there's something I can take from that. Maybe mm -hmm. don't just copy without thinking, always be thinking how, how can I use this? So anything to add on before we get rolling? No, I think I, well, a, a, I agree with all the things you said. And even as you're saying them now, it's still, I'm like, I'm reflecting. I'm like, am I doing this? Do I do this on a regular basis? So I think like, like you said, no matter how much experience I am fortunate to gain, I always still want to learn more and still be reflective. And I think that's, that would probably be the, the piece I add on to that is just continue to reflect on why, uh, what's the reason, the intent and purpose behind what you're doing or information that you're seeking out. Uh, what we wouldn't want for people to do after watching this episode is, you know, just go to these, these websites or podcasts or drills and take it, like you said, as gospel and dive it right into my practice. Well, not next week, but whenever we can get back on the course. Um, so yeah, just continue to reflect and, and be curious and ask the whys. And I think uh, that's going to get you really far. All right. So when we started to organize this episode, we talked about having five each, five, uh, five resources that we're going to present them kind of like I do one and Megan does one. Um, because I'm a jerk, I did six. So bear with me. All right, so my first one um, is something I spent a lot of time listening to probably in the last year is a podcast. So it's, I'm gonna share a screen, just kind of show you. It's called uh, From the First Chair. Uh, it's available on you know, your Apple, Apple iTunes or your podcast app. Uh, you can also access it through any Android, um, uh, Android system and online at podbean.com and Stitcher. So it's called From the First Chair. Where are we here? All right, this is, this is my trendy podcast app. So this is what it looks like from the first chair. Um, kind of two, uh, two coaches from the Ottawa Mavericks Volleyball Club. Uh, so it's Frank St. Denis and Thierry Levine. Uh, they both coached in Team Ontario. Um, Thierry was a standout athlete. Um, he's from Gatineau, but at uh, Laval University. Um, the episodes, as you can kind of see along the side, are generally around just under, just over uh, an hour. Um, so, I mean, if you got a long drive or, you know, you half an hour drive in and half an hour drive out of work, like it's, it's a great little read, uh, or, or listen, cause you're not reading a podcast. Yeah, don't, don't read while you're driving. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I just love it. They cover a whole variety of topics, as you can see. Um, uh, they got 63 episodes right now. They're taking a little kind of hiatus, um, during COVID, um, 63 episodes, they cover, they have like skill episodes where they talk about a specific skill or, or system. They have special mm -hmm. guests on probably like every three out of four pods or so. And I mean, like incredible people. I love it because it's Canadian. So they're, you know, when they talk about club volleyball, it's in the same context that we're operating in. But they're both high school coaches as well and, and educators. So they're kind of talking about that, which is really cool. Um, it's free. Who doesn't like a free resource? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty fun and conversational. Like they're, they're friends just like us. Um, you know, maybe not as cool as us. They're cooler. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I spent some time with Frank. He seems pretty cool so far. <laughs> okay. So Frank's number one on your list. I'm number somewhere else. Uh, two kind of faves. I have a lot of faves in here, but two faves for me. Uh, so number one, 
so episode 24, boop, 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 boop. I'm gonna scroll down here. I can get to the 20s. It's pretty cool. So, oh, that's, that's weird because they don't have the episodes matched up with the number. Interacting with officials. Uh, and then they, uh, they, inter they basically have a special guest on, Malcolm Musso, who's a, who's a retired FIVB official. And it was just a really cool um, hour where, as a coach, I haven't spent maybe nearly as much time talking about that relationship with the third team on the court at all times. Like, officials are always there. And, uh, I mean, they talk about rules. They talk about rules that are often misinterpreted by coaches or players. They talk about maybe the right way and the wrong way to have a relationship and a conversation with officials. Uh, it's a super positive uh, episode and kind of eye-opening. Uh, they also talk about maybe some of the things we as coaches should talk to our captains about um, to equip them to have those conversations, uh, which is, I mean, I know that Love it. I know a captain is the one that's supposed to talk to the official, but in terms of like making sure they feel comfortable and literate with skills, uh, I'll be the first mm -hmm. person to say, like, I haven't spent as much time making sure my captain feels comfortable in those situations. So uh, awesome episode. Uh, and then another one I thought was pretty cool. Um, this one down here, transformational coaching. Um, so Jordan Chen, um, again, has a master's degree from Queens, but the head of the Kines department is, at Queens is Jean Cote, um, who's, I don't know, I want to say internationally renowned in terms of coaching and transformational coaching. And um, it's pretty cool. And I think the thing I liked about it the most I don't want to play it. Yeah. So like you click on any episode and it has like all these different uh, resources within it and it has like a oh, full nice. webinar. It has a full webinar, like an hour long webinar. If you really want to geek out on that John Gote does on transformational coaching. So um, really cool. They have boatloads of relevant information and stories. So that's number one Sweet. on my list. So good. Uh, so that episode on, uh, on refereeing, did that, did that give you cause for reflection on your, your previous coaching interactions and relationships with referees? Oh, definitely. Uh, I think like, well, I would like to think like almost like any coach that's coached for a decent amount of time and like reflects on immediately, like as a younger coach, all the things I did on that list that were wrong. Um, and just again, shout out to our Nova Scotia officials, like bless their soul for putting up with me or any other young coach. <laughs> I really doesn't have nearly the idea they should of, you know, how to be polite, how to communicate. Uh, and the fact that coaches aren't even supposed to communicate with referees in, in the middle of a match. Um, you know, I know that, but does that stop me from chirping from a sideline? Well, recently it has, uh, but, but it didn't. So yeah. um, it, it was great. And again, I wish it was something I'd listened to 20 years ago, um, but I didn't know. Yeah, I think when I when I think about, I mean, I'm I maybe not as like fiery outwardly. I feel like I somewhat control my emotions and keep them inside in those situations. But um, when I think back to a lot of my interactions with uh, referees, starting out as it well as a player as a coach, uh, they gave me a lot of guidance, and it wasn't even a, you know it wasn't a formal mentorship or things like that, but. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of really great, and I've, I've, you know, for those who don't know, like I, I grew up in Newfoundland and spent most of my time there. Um, but the officials that I interacted with, um, just shared information, shared processes, you know, we're happy to chat about calls that maybe I didn't think were correct or explain something after the fact or explain to a young athlete of like how a coin toss is, is going to work when they really are terrified and have no idea. So I think, so a lot of, uh, of informal guidance comes from officials through the game. Um, you know, certainly that I, I definitely have positive interactions with them growing up and, and getting into coaching and continues to this day for sure. Absolutely. All right. We're ready for number two. Well, my number one, not these aren't necessarily in order of preference, but uh, my first resource I'm going to talk about is Volleyball TV, uh, which is an app. Uh, you can also access it through a browser, and it's basically like a hub streaming site uh, from FIVB and all things FIVB, which is the worldwide governing body for, for all things volleyball. Um, typically, they are the, the kind of like key broadcasters for live like VNL, uh, which is Volleyball Nations League, for those of you who don't know, any kind of world championships, club world championships. 
uh, anything qualifying for Olympics, they're the ones who, who stream all these things because unfortunately our sport just isn't a mainstream uh, TV. You know, we, we don't get a lot of publicity on TV. CBC has done a great job. I will give them a shout out to, uh, to showing a lot of our Olympic qualifiers uh, and, uh, and some of our events in the last couple of years. So we're getting better, uh, but it's still usually streamed and not, not making that onto TV. So volleyball TV are the, are the main people who are showing a lot of these events, which is great. Um, why do I like it? Well, it's access to international volleyball that is really tough to find anywhere else. And it's all kind of in one spot. There's everything from, you know, if I only have five minutes in between doing something else, I can watch a quick highlight of, you know, yesterday's match, or I can sit down and watch a full match. I can share it with athletes to look at, you know, some high performance volleyball that they can, you know, it, it creates visibility in our sport for our athletes. Um, you know, it's, it's men's and women's, it's beach, it's, it's kind of all of those different things um, that I think it's important for, for athletes to view and know what our sport looks like at the highest level of play. Um, so how do you get there? Well, I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Uh, if I can manage that. Hopefully I, can. I believe in you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, okay. Can we see what's going on here? Yes, ma'am. Amazing. Okay. So, um, right now volleyball TV is free, uh, which is amazing. It's free until the end of August. Um, that has happened because of COVID and there's no live volleyball matches happening. Uh, so they are offering this website and app free right now, which is amazing. Uh, so you can go back and watch any previous matches from like 2019, 2018. I think it goes back. I got, got as far as 2015 with some matches and then I stopped going down the rabbit hole. Um, but you can see, I'll just scroll down. Uh, you can see all the different kind of events that are here. So beach volleyball, world championships, club, uh, Tokyo qualifications, nations league. Uh, so they have like full matches from almost every single one of the games in all of these events. Um, they have highlights a little further down. You can see some of the stuff I've been watching over the last little bit. Um, as well as right now they're doing like a team of the week. So this week's team of the week is Crab and Born on the men's beach side. And oh gosh, I'm just going to do an atrocious job on their knees. But Gordinia and Krabs Kanoka, maybe. Uh, I apologize for the butchering of the pronunciation. Uh, they are some of the teams of the week this week that they are highlighting um, while there's no live volleyball happening. So you just go to Volleyball World TV or you can just download it from uh, the Apple Store or the Google Store and download it right to your phone and you can access it that way. Uh, details on it. So like I said, it's free right now. Normally a full season pass is $43 Canadian. It's pretty sweet. Um, or you can actually buy like just individual tournaments and individual events. So you don't need to subscribe for the whole, the whole season. Uh, but when you do, you get everything, which is amazing. Uh, I know you and I spent lots of time on the road, just like in an airport restaurant, streaming some, some VNL, streaming some <laughs> qualifiers and things like that that have been happening over the, the last little bit. Um, but yeah, it's a pretty sweet resource. Uh, like I said, it's free right now, which is amazing. Uh, my top three faves, Third place would be uh, from the 2019 Men's World Cup, um, which is, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of like a round robin style event. It's not tournament style where you play like a gold and a bronze, that sort of thing. It goes on your overall uh, rankings from the whole event, but uh, Brazil versus Poland. Um, Poland was the only team to take Brazil to five sets last year. Uh, Brazil was the eventual winner. They went undefeated in the whole event. Um, so that was a pretty stellar match to watch. Uh, second place, it's, and it's hard to believe this is second place, but it is, uh, China versus USA Women's World Cup 2019. Uh, China went on an absolute wrecking ball of a, of a World Cup last year. They went undefeated. They won gold, um, and it was their fifth national or world title, I guess, um, which is, which is a new world record in terms of number of titles on the women's side. So that is amazing. Uh, number one gotta be 2019 world beach volleyball melissa and sarah winning the gold canada's first medal at a world championships uh and it was gold which is amazing um i, I don't know if you remember this but when this match was happening live we were at edc last summer at acadia uh there was literally a session happening at the same time and i had it streaming on my phone kind of like over in the corner and the whole place just stopped everybody crowded around the phone 
uh, in the last couple of seconds when they, they got, and it was 23, 21, 23, 21. So like, it was a crazy match to watch. Um, and the whole gym just went up when we won and we were all so proud of them and so excited. It was, uh, it was a thrilling match to watch. You can go back and watch it for free right now. So yeah, that's my first one, volleyball TV. It makes sense that why number two is number two when number one is number one. I mean, you can't argue with that. And my version of that story, DDC, was a little different. Uh, I think one I was of those, writing like, where were you moments that I'll never forget. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like uh, I thought I was running that session at DDC, and you were mentoring, coach mentoring in the corner on your phone watching a beach volleyball mm-hmm. match. Um, yeah. Folks, she actually does a great job of mentoring. It was just at one time. <laughs> Um, I couldn't help it. But yeah. Yes, I, I, yes, to be clear, I wasn't running the session while I was doing this. So. Yeah. Well, you, <laughs> you would have done a great job if you had. All right. My number two. Um, we're going back to another pod. So I guess my, fir- my first personal uh, entrance into the podcast world of any topic was that from the first chair. Um, and then it got me kind of curious looking around at some different ones. So it's called Coach Your Brains Out. Um, mm. it's affiliated with gold medal square. So that's a, that's a U.S. company or U.S. based uh, company. Um, let's see here. I better share my screen before I get too far. If I can figure out how to do that. There we are. All right. Brains. Coach your brains out. Um, boop. brains, coaching, volleyball. Love that. Uh, I got 107 episodes, uh, and the, on the plus side, they're all, they're all pretty short. They're, they actually try to keep them under 30 minutes or they divide them up. As you can see here, they'll do like a part one and two or part one, two, and three. If, if they're ever over 30, uh, you are not the only ones. It happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We break ours up in the multiple and it's over when, you know, our top is, our talk is over two hours. Um, you know, I guess similar to from the first chair, it's just, it's such a broad range of topics that they talk about, which is really cool. Um, they talk to international coaches. They talk to a lot of U.S. coaches because they're U.S. based. Um, could be off-court topics, on-court topics, strength and conditioning, mental performance, how to pass. It doesn't matter. Um, so super cool. Uh, it's also free because it's a podcast and you can access it the same way. So the podcast app uh, available on Android, uh, podbean.com. Check it out. Coach your brains out. Um, <laughs> I st- I- I have a lot of favorite episodes. I got a top five list, but I'm not going to go through it all. Um, I'll just shout out. So like episodes 30, 31 and 32 are with uh, Joe Trinzi. And he talks about principles in volleyball. Like uh, having principles is like your bedrock or like your ground floor of like what you're going to do um, anytime you're, you're with a group or a season. Uh, Joe Trinzi has been the technical coordinator for USA Volleyball Women's Program, as well as spent the last year with uh, Canada as their technical advisor. So pretty cool. Uh, I mean, Karch Karai is on there for three episodes talking about, he talks about passing. Um, if you're new to Karch Karai, he's recognized as one of the greatest passers ever in the men's game uh, and is now the head coach of the women's team in the U.S. But he talks about passing. He talks about leadership. Um, there's an awesome two, two episodes, uh, episodes 88, 89 uh, by Wade Gilbert, who, I mean, you should research him. He's, he's Canadian. He's, uh, he's now down. Oh, I'm going to mess this up. As Fresno, I think. Fresno or San Diego State, but definitely a California University in their department. But uh, again, world renowned. Uh, and he talks about engineering your environment. So as a coach, all the different ways you can create a quality environment so that you know learning and getting better is going to happen at a greater rate. Um, and Cora Imparo, um, always learning. So that's uh, that's with John Kessel, who's uh, I think recently retired from USA Volleyball, but he was there, uh, basically their development director and traveled the world whether it's doing like higher level coaching courses or just like youth coaching courses. Um, mm-hmm. He's involved with Paravolley, a super awesome guy. Um, he did a clinic in Nova Scotia a couple years ago. Uh, super insightful. And then the last one I loved was uh, there's episodes 104 and 105. Oh, right, right here. Uh, with Lori Akala. Uh, so he, he played on the, the Finnish national team and, and now works with their Olympic committee and just talks about deliberate practice and um, kind of, you know, making sure you always know the why behind what you're doing and that it's all, you know, going in, going in the same way. Um, but yeah, again, it's a pod. I live, I live about 35 minutes from work. So maybe not in the last three months, but when I drove to work, <laughs> uh, it was kind of, those were like kind of perfect, like a one-stop shop. I'd get one episode out of the way. Um, and just some really fun, cool, cool guests. 
love it. Super interesting. I, I have a not a huge podcast person. I'm more of a like a, an audio book. I mean, my drive's a little longer than yours, but uh, but yeah, I'm I don't get to I'm I'm not driving to the city, so I find I'm not listening to as much. But as you know, I started mowing my giant lawn, and now I listen to my audio books on my ride on lawn mower. <laughs> So Eleven Rings is my current current book I'm listening to. It's pretty pretty sweet so far. Uh, okay, jumping into my my second resource, um, Coaching Association of Canada (CAC). Uh, I live in acronym world, but I want to make sure everybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, the Coaching Association of Canada has a great website. Um, a lot of coaches in our province are going to be familiar with it because that's where we send you to do some of your coach education courses that you need. Uh, for uh, either completing certification um, in the NCCP or um, as part of our club requirements. So I just wanted to kind of elaborate on it a little bit and show people where it is, what it is, and some of the cool things about it. Um, so like I said, it's, it's a website for all things coaching in Canada. It's not volleyball specific, so it governs coach education for any sport. So if you're coming from another sport, uh, that you've coached or done some coach education in, you you can kind of put all of your coach education in one spot, which is kind of nice if you're if you're coaching multiple um, sports. So it's the home of the NCCP, which is the National Coach Certification Program, and uh, and like I said, that's kind of the 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 locker is where you kind of hold all of your coaching education goodies. So I'm going to share my screen really quickly. Uh, to kind of show what it looks like. So this is kind of the the hit homepage. Um, there's actually, there's even more resources here than I realized. I, in, in kind of researching a little bit, I came across a lot more that I need to go back and check out. Um, but under each of these drop downs, there's a bunch of different courses, resources, information on each of these pathways, or sorry, pathways, what learning why to coach, everything here. Um, and it's just the the locker is kind of I guess where most people kind of hang out. Um, and I'm just gonna click on that really quickly. I'm gonna log in. So my view looks a little different than the average coach because I'm an administrator, but I'm just gonna very quickly show you what a coaching transcript looks like. So when you pop into your certification here, um, you can see everything that you've done in any sport. Uh, all of mine has come from volleyball or it's multi-sport, so it's a little um, cleaner that way, but you'll see your NCCP number. Oh, everybody has my phone number now. That's good. Uh, <laughs> just edit that out. Uh, so anyway, as you can see in your profile, it just kind of keeps track of like all the coaching education that you've done, um, whether it's multi-sport or sport specific and puts it all in one spot so that you can keep track of things, you can share it with organizations if they need the information, um, as well as be able to know kind of what you have done, maybe what you need to do. Um, the biggest place where we send a lot of coaches is the e-learning section, uh, which is where all of their course, edu cor sorry, coach education courses are located. So, uh, and again, these are all free, or it's free to access Locker. Uh, a lot of their courses are free, which is great. There are a couple that you do have to pay for as you continue your coach education, but the cost in terms of what you're getting for the, the value is pretty high. So really quickly, some of the familiar ones would be Making Headway, uh, the New Safe Sport Training, um, a bunch of different, uh, you know, Making Ethical Decisions and Coach Initiation to Sport um, are just some of the online resources they have, but they also, Coaching Association of Canada and NCCP also offer a lot of multi-sport courses. Uh, so I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a moment. Um, so if you don't have an NCCP number, you can sign up for one online. It's free. Um, or if you've taken any kind of coaching course, you might've had one assigned to you. If you never logged into the locker and you don't know, just contact your, your PSO, your provincial sport organization, and they can let you know if you have an NCCP number or not. But that one number kind of follows you to every sport, to every level that you coach and keeps everything in one spot. Um, my favorites of what's happening in the CAC these days, um, brand new course that just came out in April, Safe Sport Training. It's free. It's current. It just came out. Uh, I've done a lot of courses under this content over the last couple of years for uh, my job. This is one of the best ones I've done in terms of being able to kind of put everything in a concise manner to be able to understand it. Uh, I think everybody in sport is going to, you know, organizers, coaches, 
um, boards of directors, officials, uh, I think in any sport are probably going to be mandated at some point to take this, um, but I would actually recommend for parents to take it as well and maybe do it with um, your athlete, because I think there's a lot of great information in terms of acknowledging like what safe sport is, what kind of environment athletes should be presented with, what kind of environment coaches should be presented with, and what to do if you think something's not quite right um, in terms of reaching out, reporting, um, and, and just more information. So I think it's a great one to, to share with people. Uh, parents as well as athletes. Second one would be uh, the concussion management and awareness section um, included in that is Making Headway, which is a free online um, course. But there's also another bunch of resources there that I think are really helpful. I think as coaches, concussion prevalence is something that's kind of on our minds lately. And we've seen a lot of changes even with Volleyball Canada's warm-up protocols and just being more cognizant of um, you know, if a concussion might be possible, there's a lot of protocols in place now at nationals and at provincials where an athlete will be removed from play right away until we figure out what's going on with them. Um, and as a coach, that can feel a little scary sometimes because I'm not a doctor. Uh, I do have some, you know, I did a phys ed degree, so I have some training that maybe others don't. But as a, as a coach, you want to make sure your athletes are safe and that's your number one priority at all times. So it does a great job of giving you some basic resources to arm you with a little bit of knowledge and some checklists and and all they do is enable you that like if there's a possibility of kind of something that might maybe isn't quite right they send you to medical attention and so i think that's kind of a it's a nice um thing to have in your toolkit as a coach to be able to help you communicate with athletes with parents about maybe if this if a concussion might be possible that you know what we, we need to get this checked out before you return to play so i think the resources there are, are really great um, and the last one is the multi-sport modules. Uh, a lot of them are required for certification, but I think the content and the topics that are covered in a lot of them are really interesting. And entering into coaching, it kind of gives you like a wide tasting, like a few little nuggets of a bunch of different topics that uh, you can, you know, if it piques your curiosity, you can continue to do more education. Um, you know, but in topics, uh, sorry, areas like, uh, Got managing a sport program. So talking about all the other things we have to do as coaches, like in our episode with Rick, uh, episode three, all the other things we have to do as coaches, there's a, there's a course on that. Uh, there's a course on managing conflict. There's courses on basic mental skills and mental performance, um, seasonal planning, and the list kind of goes on. So it just kind of gives you a little taste of some of these things that you kind of have to do as a coach. And the great thing is Coaching Nova Scotia, well, they've been offering them online, which is amazing and, and such a great accessibility point for our coaches, but it allows you to interact with coaches from other sports uh, with kind of the same mindset in terms of the topic of the course you're in. So I think that's a really interesting um, opportunity to be able to take advantage of, to just chat, like, what does managing a, a team look like for wrestling? What does managing a team look like for uh, track and field or, you know, lacrosse or any of these other sports and you can find some interesting ideas I think some innovation things that other sports are doing really well that you can bring into your own sport as well as share some of the things that you know have worked really well for you as a coach so it's a really great networking opportunity as well yeah so that's coach.ca and everything that comes with it coach.ca <laughs> it's my karaoke choice uh <laughs> all right number three for me um for better or worse, I feel like I'm faster than you. Definitely are. I think in, I think in some of them it's worse because you're just so detailed and fun to listen to, Megan. That sounded really sarcastic. It wasn't. <laughs> I feel like I'm a bobblehead doll. I'm just like nodding at everything you say. It's like obviously we work together too much. All right, number three for me, uh, gold medal squared. Um, so it's, um, it's a U.S.-based company. Uh, they run coaching clinics. They run team camps. Uh, they have a stats app that they've created that's available on the on the – app store um but kind of like the bread and butter for me is they have a website with video and courses so i'll kind of share my screen here um gold medal squared or gms um right off the top free for 30 days so you don't have to give them credit card information um you you just register and like get your three 30 days of all the videos you want and, and courses and then peace out or you can pay um, I guess kind of the things that the thing that I like about gold medal squared, I'll kind of scroll down here is, you know, they try to, it's not really like, um, it's not a clearing house of just like random drills and, uh, and theories and ideas. Like they've really kind mm -hmm. of like narrowed in on, 
on uh, these kind of three things or like their beliefs as a company and that almost almost everything they present is kind of centered around this so they they try to simplify everything like it could still be a really high level of volleyball but they really believe in simplification if things are simple learning is going to happen um you know they, they try to rely on science and stats and, and data um for a lot of their their reasons of why they do things um okay. and you know they 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 really believe in principles and i talked about joe trinzi talking and coach your brains out about principles like he's he's again part of gold medal squared um but they just talk about how principles doesn't mean like you're locked into things it just means it's like it's really going to direct you in, in how you how you coach and how you choose to do things um so in terms of if you want to get paid if you want to pay the money for it um it's about fifteen dollars a month U.S. Uh, and a year is one hundred and fifty dollars U.S. Um, and I mean, you do have to. It's, I know in the in some other platforms, you can you know there's there's some basic videos that might be available to you without paying, but then they tease you mm -hmm. into getting the membership. And then re really with this, it's you, you need to pay for the videos. Um, so I mean, there's a dashboard. So gold medal squared plus. Um, let's see here. Just kind of on the side, uh, there's a lot of things in here uh, that tie together. But for media, you can you can filter by like skills, by systems, by drills, uh, filter categories. These are all the different ways I can filter things uh, just to like look at things. Mm -hmm. um, and they kind of divide up skills. They also have courses, and the cool thing I like about that is. Uh, like it'll say here foundations for individual defense 17 lessons and I mean like that just means 17 individual videos but they're all kind of like five to ten minutes a lot of them are really short and just kind of talk about small things um, and those and those videos are kind of they're available as separates if you search through skills but they've just kind of brought them together and uh, and made it like a you know what if you want to spend an hour looking at individual defense like here's right. here's what they believe in um, which is kind of neat uh, I looked at the, I watched the setting one um, which was really, really cool. Setting with Courtney Thompson. Oh, there's Canada's own Tom Black mindset training. Hey, Tom. Um, but yeah, I just, I kind of spent some time on this in the last four or five months. Uh, I'd never looked at it before. I never really been exposed to it. Uh, they really believe in motor learning. Um, mm -hmm. If you're not sure what motor learning is, go check it out. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, I just, I just enjoyed it because it made me think. It made me question what I was doing. That didn't mean I like thought what I was doing was wrong or right. It just made me like really analyze, like, again, be deliberate about what I'm doing and, uh, and have purpose and have principles. And like, I, I, it made me a better coach, not just by following blindly what they did, but by, mm -hmm. like, you know, look, looking through their lens at some things and like, you know what, honestly, I'm not saying I'm a good coach or a bad coach, but like, I, I love some of their stuff. And then there's some stuff that I'm like, ah, you know what, maybe I'm going to go a different way, but because it made me think, and analyze right. and use some data and some beliefs. So, uh, gold medal curiosity. Yeah. So gold medal squared website, again, that gold medal squared, uh, podcast, coach your brains out. It's affiliated with them, but it's, it's pretty cool. I don't have a, I don't have a top five, Dave. There's, a, there's all kinds in there. <laughs> there's so. too many. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, so kind of staying in the same thread, uh, I'm just going to chat about art of coaching. Um, and again, this one might be a little more familiar to some of our listeners because uh, VNS in the past has given away free memberships to AOC, which is was a pretty incredible gift. Uh, we're not able to do it because the prices went up a little bit, um, but it's still a great resource for coaches out there. And I, I guess dissimilar to GMS, um, there's a bunch of free content that you can access on Art of Coaching, um, and then it does the teaser of like, yeah, this video looks great. They share it. And then you're like, ah, I don't have access to it. So they, they kind of tease you into considering buying, buying a membership, um, which I'll get to in a little bit, but basically art of coaching was started by three coaches, uh, Russ Rose, John Dunning and Terry Leskovich. Um, they're all from the U S uh, Russ Rose is Penn state, uh, like one of the winningest coaches in NCAA division one, I, I think of all time, if I, read correctly. Uh, John Dunning, who is a uh, former coach at Stanford and retired, I think, three or four years ago. Um, and then Terry Leskovich uh, is a former USA head coach, as well as uh, I think is still at Oregon State, uh, certainly went back to Oregon State. And uh, 
it, it I was reading the story of how this this website got together and it was kind of like is like three guys who are really passionate and have a ton of knowledge and experience were like we should share this with some people and wanted to create a way to share their own knowledge plus a bunch of other amazing volleyball coaches with coaching or coaches who exist kind of out on in the world um their format is similar in terms of they do live live clinics uh all over the u.s and i think some in canada as well probably mostly on the west coast i think is where they've been uh you can apply to host clinics kind of in your own home uh you know gym or, or province or state um you can attend them they, they run them kind of all over normally in normal times all over the place and you can go and and go to a, a workshop for the weekend um, but then you can also access a lot of content online and so it kind of started from the the live um coaching clinics and then it kind of morphed into the website that now houses a lot of the live sessions you can go back and watch as well as a lot of just content that's been created um, for the purpose of of users so uh why do i like it well it's a little different than gold medal squared um but it's a great resource for all levels of volleyball um with a variety of presenters and philosophies so where gold medal squared kind of has a consistent theme and their principles that you just talked about through everything that's on their site. I think I would view Art of Coaching a little more broad with a lot of different people with a lot of different principles and philosophies uh, kind of sharing their knowledge and information. So I think, you know, in, in that point, it's a, it's, it's kind of fun to peruse around. And, and like you said, you might come across someone who you agree with or you don't agree with. Uh, you can listen to the whys and, and why they think the way they do, but uh, probably presents a bit of a broader um spectrum i guess of of philosophies and points of view uh things i love about it are quick videos i'm a huge fan of those when you know you need a little bit of information you're looking for a spark looking for something to freshen freshen up maybe like what's happening in your practice again keeping in mind intent and purpose uh but the short videos are great uh because it's just a it's a quick two or three minute and and on you go to the next thing you're doing in your day but they also do have longer webinars, especially since COVID, they've been doing webinars like every week, multiple webinars. Some of them are free, some of them are user pay. Um, and right now, uh, you get a full premium membership, which you get like everything full blown is $9.99 a month or $99 a year. That's US dollars, so pretty good. Um, right now, you can get 15% off on a premium membership and they do a two week free pre membership uh, free premium membership so you can go kind of poke around and see what's going on uh, for two weeks at no cost and decide if it's something you want to invest in uh, you can also i think similar to gms you can buy like one-offs you can buy a webinar from like this date or this event or you can buy a series of videos um, if that one thing is what you're interested in instead of paying for kind of a monthly or annual membership so that's kind of cool too uh, I'll just really quickly share my screen and show what it looks like. Boom. Let's see here. All right. So this is Art of Coaching. Um, I'm signed into my um, my account, uh, but actually I don't think I have a premium account anymore. So this is the free one. This is what you'll see uh, by signing into a free account. But similar to GMS, you know, you have over drills and skills. You can you know, pick a topic, you can go through a bunch of drills, you can pick a skill you want to look at, you can pick at a certain position. Um, so let's say I pick blocking, um, you know, a whole bunch of videos will populate from a gajillion different topics. So you can either filter over here, they have experience level, which is kind of nice. So if you're coaching that 13 or 14 U team, or even a 15 U team and kids are just getting started, you can kind of select appropriate videos that that relate to that context so that feature is kind of nice you can filter by presenter durations uh free content so like i don't need to get jealous by the ones i can't see i'm just seeing the ones that i'm i'm gonna get with my free um my free access so yeah you can kind of see um you know they have some of these videos have tons of views um but yeah you can click on it and like i said it's it's a quick these quick hit ones are pretty short um so easy to easy to kind of stomach in a short period of time like i said you can also access like previous clinics you can register for clinics as of right now you can see they're all canceled uh the video series um those are some kind of like clumps of videos you can you can watch like you mentioned similar to gold medal square uh so yeah that's kind of um art of coaching 
in terms of what their website looks like and how you kind of access it. Um, my faves, let me see what I had here. Uh, top three. So there's actually a lot of Canadian content on Art of Coaching. Um, a lot of, like I said, the Western part of the, the uh, country, a lot of those coaches have been a part of or hosted um, Art of Coaching clinics. So um, one of the top ones I thought was super interesting video uh, it was by Ryan Hofer it was from last June. And he was talking about finding someone that you love to learn from. So it was just, it, it was like him and Glenn Hogue and Carrie McDonald and somebody else kind of sitting down, just doing like a, a round table chat with the coaches in the gym about some different topics. And Ryan was just talking about the power of being able to go into somebody's gym and watch what they're doing, see what they're doing, ask questions. So if you can really find somebody who you, you kind of align with and you have the ability to do that, that can be really powerful for coaches. So that was a really great clip. It was like three minutes, super quick to watch. Great, great advice. Uh, next one is a longstanding kind of uh, art of coaching thing that I, I, I don't know if I purchased it or I got it uh, at, a, at a time in the past. But uh, for me, Setting is probably my second favorite uh, position to coach, but it is the position I know the least about. Um, and it was always kind of scary for me. So uh, Lauren Carlini, who is a current setter with the U.S. national team, uh, she's an art of coaching kind of rep. And so she did a whole series on setting. Um, so when I was looking for some different technical points, it was interesting to get her point of view. Um, she had a whole series of really simple videos um, of drills for setters to do that, like, which are relevant right now because a lot of them they could do at home. Uh, so it's just upping the increase in the number of contacts that setters get um, that they could do either like pre post practice on their own in an individual session. Um, a lot of great little, little things for them to do. So that's a great one to check out. Uh, and then the last one is uh, one of their virtual clinics that they did uh, April 22nd, 2020. So not that long ago, it was mastering the skill of reading, which is a huge proponent of our sport. Um, reading cues on defense is they spent an, I think an hour with uh, two, one was a former, two former Stanford athletes, one just graduated and one graduated a while ago, um, either libs or defensive specialists and just kind of pick their brain on I think it was John Dunning led it, but just pick their brain on, on reading and talking about the importance of it and things they look for. Um, so that was a really great um, resource and a fun one to watch for sure. So that's Art of Coaching. It's definitely, it's definitely a rabbit hole. I call it like, it's like the YouTube of volleyball. You can find like anything, anything you really want. Um, so true. I don't want to say stuff you don't want to want, you don't want to find because you do that on YouTube. But. <laughs> All right, number four, we're, I feel like we're doing well, but I don't want to look at the clock here. So um, kind of one that is just relatively new to me. So it's, it's literally, the website is called Coaching Volleyball. Um, and kind of like the weird story, just because I randomly follow people on Twitter. I, uh, I went to, um, I was lucky enough to go to a coaching symposium in Ottawa from Volleyball Canada that they put on a couple years ago. And one of the coaches that spoke was Mark Lebedew, who was uh, coaching the Australian men's national team at the time. They had a, uh, he just talked and I, I thought he was really cool. So I followed him on Twitter. Uh, but I found out he had a relationship with a gentleman named John Foreman uh, from the mm -hmm. U.S. And they had actually previously, I want to say like in the last decade of, of kind of like co-authored um, a couple books. The, the uh, what is it? The Coaching Wizards. Yeah, coaching wizard. Oh, volleyball coaching wizards, uh, which you yeah. can find on, I've had uh, you know, iOS bookstore or, or in 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 fine print. Um, but um, so it's kind of like his personal website. It's uh, let's see, I'll share it up here. Um, his back, John's background. It's not Mark Lebedew's website. It's John Foreman's website. His background is. I mean, he's coached uh, internationally. He's coached in Europe. Mm -hmm. He's. I mean, he's coached. NCAA club, um, a lot of development as well. And he just decided that he wanted to start putting down all these different resources. I originally, when he was coaching in England, uh, he realized there was, there's really no resources available uh, for coaches at that time. So he basically started to create a website and like get resources together. Um, but it's, it's pretty cool. So you can see up here, coachingvb.com and that'll be down in the description. A mm -hmm. uh, couple tabs. And I mean, really it's just like blogs and posts and different things on, you know, anything you want to know, <laughs> his thoughts, um, as well as like a lot of experts within the field. 
Um, he's got some different things. Actually, if you want to get a job in the U.S. coaching volleyball, go check out this uh, development. But kind of the thing that really got me going on this, um, so courses and resources was coaching conversations recordings. So basically when they're, you know, when the vid, when the COVID hit in March, you kind of see March 22nd, he began to do online conversations. Oh, yeah. And ba basically just, um, and a lot of them are with Mark Lebedew, but just talking to people in the volleyball community around the world at a lot of different levels, male, female, pro, international, club, um, anything. And just mm -hmm. talking about a lot of just, I don't want to say random stuff, but there's just interesting things. Um, so you can go on here. How many do we got? How many are there? Uh, I think there's almost like 49 or 50 interviews right now. He's, you know, he almost Jeez. is doing one every two or three days. Mm -hmm. um, what else is cool? Yeah, again, I, I loved it. Unique topics, unique coaches or, or speakers. Uh, a lot, I mean, people I hadn't heard before. It's a lot of, like a lot of European content as well as American and, uh, and like the European side of the game was, was something I hadn't been exposed to uh, a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, everything, coaching, um, things as specific as defending when your block is weak, mental performance aspects mm -hmm. like motivation, communication. Uh, there's ones on there about like scouting and stats and data. Um, it's neat because I feel like there's topics in here that are great for any level, mm -hmm. uh, any gender, um, and I mean, really, as for VNS, that's we we want a resource that all of our membership can go check out. So um, having a little something for for everyone is is definitely cool. Um, but I think there's two faves in there. Um, I think number one, there's one in there about stress and coaching, which I mean, we've all been there on the sideline, or like just especially especially in a club system, you're there's no full-time coaches, at least in Nova mm -hmm. Scotia's club system. So you're, you know, you got your 40 hour week or plus job, or you, you know, you're a full-time student uh, with a job, you got family, you got friends, there's other choices you're making. And then you're, you're putting your heart and soul into like, you know, like four to, I don't know, 12 hours a week uh, to a group and stress, stress is going to mm -hmm. happen. So it was a really relevant topic. topic. And then yeah. there's just one in there about like setter development. Um, and I like, I really vibed on that one. It was from uh, their speaker was Jamie Morrison, who has been involved with the USA national team, was also the, Nether the Netherlands women's national team coach for a couple of years. Uh, so he just had some really cool thoughts on, again, how to develop a setter. And that's pretty relevant for a lot of coaches. There's, I think the minority of coaches feel like setting is their primary passion or, or knowledge uh, of who to coach. And, I don't know. It just, it was, it was interesting. So coaching vb.com. Neat. Super interesting. I went, when I, the first time I went to that website, I was like blown away by the amount of content on it. <laughs> there was more than I was expecting. Um, and that, uh, the, the one you mentioned about like, you know, how to defend when your block is weak, like, those types of scenarios are the realities that we are all faced with, with whether it's a club team or even like a team in us or, a university team um you can say like we want all of these things to be great but the reality is, is that there's always weaknesses on your team so i think that's an interesting perspective of like here's your reality now here's some possible solutions because you can always say well like yeah you need to work on your blocking you need to make them jump higher well like if that's as high as they jump how do i deal with that what are some <laughs> like how how can i make us the strongest we can be or minimize our weaknesses as much as we can so that's a that's a cool perspective for sure relatable I like it um next one for me is pretty straightforward uh it's Volleyball Canada's YouTube channel and to be honest I didn't spend a ton of time on it before this year um I didn't really know what was on there so uh the the peak of interest is, is Volleyball Canada released a couple of videos since COVID has been happening uh, from our national team coaches that were super interesting, which I'll get to in a second. But it made me, uh, gave me the opportunity, I guess, to kind of go through and see what was actually on their YouTube page. So there's some interesting stuff on there. And I think it's, I think it's even Volleyball Canada would admit it's a work in progress. It's something that they're continuously adding to. Um, so there's, there's definitely some older content there, but I think they're, they're starting to develop some 
um, something more than than just kind of streaming some events and things like that, which is is what the bulk of what exists there now. But it's kind of interesting. So, uh, I mean, obviously to get to it, you just search YouTube uh, for Volleyball Canada, and and their channel pops up. I'll put it up pull it up here in a second, but. In terms of content, they have, um, you know, some club nationals uh, from the past few years that they broadcasted and, and kind of streamed some games and they've, they've put them up there so you can go back and watch them. Um, there's Canada Cup from uh, some past summers uh, of provincial teams uh, competing there. So some of those are there, I think, when it was held in Richmond, I think, two years ago. I think that's the, the latest one. I don't think any Halifax ones got up there from last year just yet. Uh, but also there's Team Canada highlights um, from matches, from BNL, from qualifiers. There's interviews um, as things are shared through other mediums uh, or other uh, media broadcasters like CBC or FIVB. Um, they've been sharing some of their content there. So if you're kind of really looking for some Canadian content about what's happening with our athletes and teams, it's a really great place to go check it out. Um, in addition to that, they do have some cool resources for coaches. Uh, there's some grassroots videos in there. There's some uh, beach videos about drills and, and how to teach some skills as well as some indoor stuff. So I'll pull that up here and let you guys have a look as to what's happening on Volleyball Canada's YouTube page. Uh, so this is their main site. Um, you can see their their homepage has a, a couple of things there, but videos and playlists are probably where you're going to live most of the time when you're checking it out. Uh, playlists are some of the, the different um, content that they've put together. So there's some smash ball and some grassroots activities there, some examples that they've used in some of their, uh, they've created for like training videos and for the like elementary teacher um, modules, they have some of the videos they created, they've uploaded here um, to be accessible for those, but you can access them for free. Uh, so that's kind of cool to have a look. Phys ed teachers or community leaders, there's some cool little activities there. You can even do those activities with older kids um, as well. Just kind of modify it for your context. Uh, then there's a whole bunch of beach drills categorized kind of by age group different things you can do on the sand with those guys, uh, as well as some indoor drills and things that you can do. Again, it's not huge, but there's some content that's been started um, that is very relevant. Uh, and then you can kind of continue to scroll down and there's a few more things listed down there in playlists. Uh, and then if you go back to videos, this is where kind of like everything obviously lives that they've shared. Uh, so you kind of have to pick through it a little bit more. It's not organized for you, but there's like, I kept scrolling for a couple minutes and I got down there. So uh, there's lots and lots of different content, depending on what you're looking for, um, that you can kind of poke around and see what's in here. Um, things that I really like about this, let me just stop my screen share for a second. Uh, things that I really like about this um, is that it's free. We talked about free resources and uh, I'm anticipating them continuing to add content as time goes on. Uh, my faves, I got two. Uh, one, which I didn't know this was on here till today, I'm not going to lie, but it's huge. So I'm going to throw it out there as, as my number one, actually. They have the whole coaching symposium from last year posted there. So 2019, Volleyball Canada hosted an international coaching symposium. John already mentioned it. They've done it for the last two years, um, but last year's they taped all of them and you can purchase them for $29.99 in Volleyball Canada's coaching center or you can access them for free on their YouTube page. So uh, I didn't watch them all to make sure they're all there, but there's a lot of them there. Uh, the content is unreal. Um, John and I are fortunate enough to be there in person along with actually quite a few other coaches from Nova Scotia, but uh, listening to, to all of the head coaches for all the VNL teams that were there because VNL was happening at the same time, plus a, a lot of great Canadian coaches uh, within our Volleyball Canada system, as well as the club system in Ontario, um, the youth sports system across the country. There's a lot of great presenters, a lot of great topics that happened during that. Uh, highlight during that event, I would say for me, one was the sitting volleyball session with Nicole Band, head coach of our women's sitting team. Um, that sitting session was actually pretty profound for myself. Um, just hearing her talk about some of the differences in coaching sitting athletes. Uh, I, I still remember one of the key things was she talked about how she kneels down on the ground when she's talking to her athletes. That was not something that really occurred to me uh, as something that would be beneficial. But when she explained it, 
it, you're, you're at eye level with your athletes, uh, it makes a lot more sense and communication is probably what, uh, better received uh, when you're at the same level. So that was huge. Um, so that was one of the, the key moments for me from that event. And as well as uh, Carrie McDonald's presentation on serving velocity and point scoring optimization, uh, super interesting presentation to listen to. It's about an hour long. Um, I highly recommend both of those sessions, but anything from that whole weekend was fantastic. Uh, but I know what Carrie talks about is a lot of uh, the principles that we embody through for our team and us kind of playing philosophy, philosophy, sorry, uh, for serving. Uh, so if anybody wants to know more about kind of where that came from, Carrie does a great job talking about it. So I would definitely recommend that one. The last thing I'll mention about the YouTube channel, again, a really recent video um, with Dan Lewis, who is the uh, assistant coach of our men's national team and also the head coach of the next gen men's program. Uh, he did two videos uh, with Blair Van, who is the one of the liberos for Team Canada, and uh, did a little video analysis. So it, they're short, they're less than 20 minutes. I think one is 12, one is 19 minutes. Um, and he, him and Blair actually just go through a bunch of different clips of watching people defend and talking about curating and talking about, well, this person did this, so I saw this, so I did this. Uh, or it talked about mistakes that they made and, and just really subtle um, curating and decision making um, things that happen in live matches for Team Canada and they do a great job of breaking it down. It's super accessible. I think any coach at any level can take so much from it in terms of really critically watching your team play and your players and how to look at performance analysis and figure out why athletes are doing what they're doing. Um, so I thought Dan did a great job. He's also funny. So there's some humor kind of dropped into that. Um, it's very entertaining to watch, but also super educational and accessible, meaning anybody can watch it. So those would be my, my tops from Volleyball Canada's YouTube channel. I enjoyed it. I thought it was like, you, you talk about how you can not give Volleyball Canada money by, talk, by doing it through the coaching center. You can go right to their, their website. And I was like, oh, Volleyball Canada is going to be mad. And then you shouted out Volleyball Canada multiple times by like Carrie McDonald shout out, Dan Lewis shout out. So listen, I didn't put it on their YouTube channel. <laughs> I just found it today. <laughs> Someone's gonna be pissed. Uh, cool. I'm gonna make a game time decision. I'm gonna drop one. I'm gonna drop my sixth and go right to fifth. Uh, okay. Just because I, I look at the clock and I'm like, we're already over an hour. Come on, bro. Um, Killer. Killer. So maybe maybe in the, in the description I'll put my bonus, and if you actually watch the video and go to the description, you'll get the benefits. So. There'll be like one viewer. Um, all right. So you said me? <laughs> yeah. I'm at least like 20 of every of our like. <laughs> um, so my last one is. Oh, wait, wait a second. Uh, I got to make sure I get it right here. Boop, boop. Hey. Hey, hey it's our own coaching resources page. Um, so, well, Nova Scotia. Again, maybe kind of similar to this pod, uh, uh, our homepage, if you kind of hover over coaching and then you can kind of go down and hit coaching resources, you get this beautiful page. Coaching is hard. Uh, you're right. Uh, no surprise, you'll find almost everything in this pod on here. We just kind of recently revamped it. We, Megan, recently revamped it. Um, and again, it's, a, it's, a, it's under, permanently under construction as in we're always going to be looking to add to it. Um, but everything here is is live and, and works. Megan with some beautiful maple leaves and U.S. flags and globes for the world, uh, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, just just check it out. I think uh, some awesome ones for me is down here in the coaching documents section. Um, let's see here. So, uh, athlete development framework uh, in working with coaches as an evaluator and as uh, and being around Megan as she talks to coaches. Um, Oh, that's not the framework. That's okay. So this is the technical essentials. <laughs> we'll go backwards. Good on my pivot. Mind. Good pivot. Yeah. Um, if you're ever wondering, like, oh, how does, what are some key parts of every skill? Um, this literally is the document for you. It's four pages. Kind of like talks about every skill and outcome for the skill. So again, for passing, it's like, where do they want the pass to go? What arc do you want it? Um, and then it talks about the process, which is kind of the same thing as like teaching cues or teaching points for coaches. So yeah, for, for passing, there's 12. Um, not that you'd ever have a drill where you talk about all 12, but like maybe it's, you're working on platform for a practice and you can kind of go back and be like, oh, what well, does Volleyball Canada and Volleyball Nova Scotia believe in? Oh, 
establishing the platform early, straight and simple with the elbows locked, one motion to the ball. Oh, okay. I have my two or three teaching points that I can really emphasize with the athletes for that, that practice or that, or that mm-hmm. week or that season um, and really narrow it down so that to help the athletes um, focus. So that was here, the technical essentials um, and the skills matrix. Uh, let's see. I wonder if I got this loaded. Boop. Oh yeah. If you're a coach being like, what do I teach at this age group? Um, and I mean, it doesn't matter how experienced you are. A lot of times you're just like, Oh, this is the group I'm with. Like, I'm just going to hope I'm doing it right. This literally breaks it down by age group, by skill. Again, it's, it's a guideline. Uh, it's kind of like a, it's the long-term athlete development model through, through sports Canada and through volleyball Canada. Um, it breaks it down kind of the four different, um, stages of, of a skill uh, along the top. Mm-hmm. So that's your color coding. So if I was like a 13 or 14 year head coach, and I'd be like, Oh, I wonder like at the end of the year, what am I hoping I expose my athletes to if I'm doing my seasonal planning, I just come on down here and go down the column and I'm like, Oh, okay. So it's like serving. I got some stuff. I want to teach them. Maybe I want to start touch, teaching them to jump float or jump spin, even though they're like little, little tykes and maybe they don't get it over the net a lot, but like, Hey, let's intro it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Talked about what type of passing. Um, it's awesome. And then there's all obviously the kind of like different tabs along. So what am I learn to train or to train to train T to T. And then again, it just kind of breaks it down just for that um, age group, the different skill variations, uh, different tactics you might use. It's, it's pretty heavy. It looks scary because there's a lot of colors and there's a lot of mm-hmm. lines, but at the same time, if you just kind of find your age group and kind of go up and down, maybe erase all the other uh, columns to make it easier. Um, you can kind of see what Volleyball Canada thinks maybe where you should be, whether the mm-hmm. athletes are there or not, uh, and definitely kind of at the end of the season, which skills and tactics, um, ideally, you can help expose those athletes to. So those are kind of like two personal faves off that page. But, yep. uh, but again, just, just know what's on there. Um, know we'll keep updating it. If any of our amazing membership has some cool resources out there, which there's boatloads, like let us know it if something up. doesn't if something doesn't work let megan know <laughs> <laughs> i did just check all the links so they should be good but yeah. that's not to say something might not change in the future i'm gonna go sabotage one <laughs> yeah right. and it's like you said it's it's a living it's a living page on our site there's gonna be updates and more things added and try to keep it user friendly. So it's easy to, to navigate through, but hopefully that's somewhere where you can always go. Like John said, everything from this, this podcast will be on there and other things as John and I come across them or, or as other people let us know about some, some great resources. And they, like you said, we really try to highlight the ones that are Canadian and not that there's, you know, ones from outside of Canada aren't great. There's tons of great resources, but sometimes it's nice to be able to listen in your own context, like you said before. So uh, it's, and, and support Canada as well and, and Canadian kind of podcasts and resources because we always want more. There's so much great knowledge in our country, which leads me to my last point. What a segue. Um, for me, <laughs> one of my favorite coaching resources is people. And I think it's, it might be one of the most underutilized resources and cost effective uh, that exists, I think. Um, I think as coaches, we we gravitate to uh, those coaching a level above us, which I think is a great place to go for information. Um, and, and, or, and by that, I even mean like, so I'm in Nova Scotia, so I got to go outside of Nova Scotia, which I think is important. But there's still a lot of great knowledge that exists here in our province, in your own community, in your own club. And I think some of those resources are some of the most untapped. Um, there's so many incredible volleyball minds out there and even just coaching minds. Um, my job, you know, gives me the fortunate opportunity to interact with a lot of other sports. Uh, I spend a lot of time with other TDs here in Nova Scotia from a variety of sports and I get to, you know, pick their brain and see what they're doing. And, you know, is it something we could do and vice versa? Um, so I think there's a lot of really good things happening in sport here in our province. Um, and I definitely want to encourage people who are viewing to, to utilize those resources more. There's always something you can learn from anybody, like we mentioned in the beginning. Uh, why is that important? Well, I think sharing knowledge is important. Uh, inspiring thoughts, cultivating curiosity, uh, all of those things are, are great 
you know, we're nerds, we're volleyball nerds. That's why we started this podcast and why we're still doing it and have so much fun just talking to each other about volleyball things. Uh, but, you know, it can also really help a club like align in terms of, you know, do you have a, a certain philosophy or a certain style of play that you really believe in and you want to be known for? And, you know, does your 14U team up to your 18U team, are they on that train? Do they know what's happening? Does your 16U coach know what's happening on the 15U team and the 16U team? Um, so knowing what's happening kind of before athletes come to you and then kind of where you want them to be for where they leave. Uh, that skills matrix you just showed will be a great tool to help with that, but also just conversations within a club or within a community or within a province can kind of help align the things we want to align and, and create curiosity and thought and be able to ask why. Like, wow, you're doing that. That's really different. Why are you doing that? And not, a, not in an accusatory way, but just in a curiosity way to hopefully share knowledge. And I think the willingness to share knowledge and, and pull the cards away from our chest a little bit more is continuing to grow and grow. Um, and hopefully that's just something that we can encourage coaches to do. So I think some ways you can do that you know, having round table chats like within your club or within a community or just call up like one or two other people, hop on a Zoom and say like, hey guys, you have 30 minutes, let's have a coffee and chat about setting, whatever it is, and to see what what kind of ideas come up out of it. Uh, inviting people into your gym, asking to go into other people's gyms to have a look. Uh, coaching can feel like you're on your own silo a lot of the time. You're in your own four walls, in your own community because you're the person who keeps volleyball going there and you love it and you're passionate about it, but it can feel pretty lonely from time to time and wondering like, do I know what I'm doing? Uh, what's everybody else doing out there? So kind of opening those doors and having that open gym and it, it can be a little scary to do that. Not going to lie uh, of having someone come into your gym or ask you questions about why you're doing things you're doing. Uh, but I think hopefully that instills you to, reflect and think about well why am I doing this and if somebody asks you why you're doing something you don't know like that's okay but you know what I don't know like that's just how I've done it that's how I was coached as an athlete that's how you know whoever taught me how to coach that's how they did it uh, I don't really know why and like that's okay as long as you recognize that and work to figure it out um, you know we're trying to do more and more PD from an association perspective but I still think there's a lot of things that can happen with sharing knowledge um, within within communities within clubs uh favorite things top of the list um just creating networking creating a closer knit volleyball community uh creating mentorships whether they're formal or informal uh, and just creating an environment of trust and being able to ask why we do the things that we do i think is is a huge way for us to grow and continue to grow as a province in our sport for sure people so Thank simple you. It's almost closing time. I know. Okay. We definitely went over an hour, but we'll try to wrap it no, up. No, no, right no. You went over an hour. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't even know what time we started, so I couldn't even keep myself on, on track. But here we are. Uh, all, so, yeah. Always assume you're, you're long. That's, that's fair. That's what I do. That's fair. Uh, so, yeah. So, to close it out, um, I have a couple questions for each of us along with my favorite question which you know is coming uh but maybe john like what are one or two kind of like aha like ah, moments in coaching that you've had either recently or in the past about uh you know something you picked up something that sparked something yeah definitely um i think the first thing for me is um and this is recent is like less is more for drills. So I guess what I mean by that is um, kind of going like chronologically here, like, and this is talking about me as a young coach through to now, as well as I think a lot of other coaches, like when you start coaching, first thing you do is you do the drills that were done to you. Like you coach how you were coached because that's, that's what you know. know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you don't, you don't know any better. It, it, like maybe you had a great time and you love the drills. So that's why you want to do them. There's no wrong or right answer. It's just, you do it and then um you start to realize like oh there's lots of there's a lot of other volleyball out there so you start to use drills from like maybe other coaches or from other resources you go on to like a you go on to youtube and you see a cool drill so you do it um but there's no kind of reflection in context as to you know why am i doing it did it just look cool so i'm going to do it with my 14u team uh but that's a university team um or is it like i'm doing it for a reason so and then you start to realize like, oh, like 
a drill. Like I know the parts of a drill. It's like a writing an essay. There's a beginning, a middle and an end. Like I just, I can create my own drills. Um, and then you start to get like really creative and have some, like a lot of fun and like, mm-hmm. well, I want to do passing today and I want to do passing. And I want to work in the platform and I'm just going to like create something that's kind of new and fresh and cool, um, uh, for my athletes to work on, on that. Um, and then kind of like what I've come to recently is having a very small amount of drills. And when I say mm-hmm. a small amount, I mean like the framework of the drills, like I don't need 40 different drills or 40 different frameworks or like, when I say a framework, I mean like how the drill rotates, like how many right, reps happens. Yeah. yeah. Um, like I can have a very small amount of drill frameworks and then there's an infinite way of, of tweaking drills. Um, without changing kind of like the framework of it um i mean it's can you give me an example <laughs> well no so so <laughs> there uh i guess for me like i mean you talk about butterfly everyone talks about everyone knows butterfly so that's like you know a server to a passer or it could be like a thrower to a catcher if you're warming mm-hmm. up um so like if you just think about that framework of like how people rotate through it and it could be like well you're gonna maybe it's actually a setting drill and my setters are in on each side as a target, but like the framework of the drill is butterfly. But then I could do the exact same drill the next practice. And like now the emphasis is on the passers and right. maybe, maybe they stay for three reps, but it's like, it's still after you serve, you become a passer. And after you pass, you become a target or however it is, but the framework is the same. Um, you could add in an attacker, you can add in a blocker. But I guess my point is, is, um, and I, I probably got this, I think this was from the volleyball Canada coaching symposium is, it's cool to be creative and have all these different drills, but if you have a different drill every practice and multiple different drills every practice, how long is the athlete taking to pick up how the drill runs? Right. Probably a decent amount of time. And that means they're not really being able to put in the brain power on like the skill or the tactic that you really want them to, to get better at. So, I mean, that was a big epiphany for me is that mm-hmm. if, you know, the first one or two practices, you're like, here's a couple drills that are gonna be like keys for us. Like, let's make sure we understand the rotation. And then all of a sudden, like, if you're doing it for 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes of time on task instead of 15 minutes of like, oh, where do I go? Do I go here now? Do I go there? Where do I go after I serve? It's like, uh, I'm working on platform out early and like angle to the target early. So, I mean, that was... You're creating interest out of like the details of your drill versus like a whole new drill set up every time. Yeah. And I mean, there might be coaches out there being like, well, like, isn't it just going to be like, won't the kids get bored? But I mean, again, you can tweak so many things. It's like how many reps, um, what the emphasis is. You can add in like score, different scoring systems, even though the framework is the same, like a scoring system one week. So it's like, you got to read your audience and know like, well, do they need something different or fresh? But uh, I've, stopped, no, I've stopped being a chef that creates like 40 recipes every single practice when I really just have, I just have to have a couple great recipes and then feed, feed the kids. So that's... <laughs> That's my first one. Were we going to go both at the same time? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. What's your second epiphany? Uh, um, I, I wrote like four down here, even though I said two. I think, I think one I choose is just becoming more comfortable with the balance between like random and blocked training. I think mm-hmm. coaching how I coached, you know, there's a lot of like coach standing on a box, digger standing in a court or maybe not even on the box, like a coach standing on the same side of the net as you on the ground and hitting balls at you, which is never going to happen in the game of volleyball. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it kind of like education went to like, no, a block is bad. You want to be as random as possible because random is game-like, like it's uncontrolled. And then I just realized that like both, both are, there's, there's quality in both, sorry, and there's mm-hmm. value in both. And it just depends on the group you have and the time of the season you're in. And again, uh, if there's ever a way you can do a little bit of block that leads into like another drill that, that works on something. Um, again, there's, there's no one size fits all. It's going to be different for every coach, but there's a balance. And um, with that game, like training being such an emphasis, this is a John, John Kessel nugget. He said, Kesselism. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's what he calls them. Actually. Kesselism. <laughs> What is the best serving drill? It's serve, pass, set, hit. What's the best passing drill? Serve, pass, set, hit. What's the best setting drill? And so on and so on. Just his point is 
um, just because you're working on one skill doesn't mean other skills can't be practiced. Maybe the coaches mm -hmm. aren't focused as much on like the hitting part of a passing drill, um, but they're just, they're, they're bonus reps, they're extra reps that the athletes can be getting. So um, game-like is good, a little bit of random, lots of, well, sorry, a little, little bit of block, lots of random. And like the more you can do all skills and all drills, I mean, that's, that's what volleyball is. So that was my longest answer of the night. Now you have to be three minutes or less. Good luck. Okay. Mine are going to be short. Oh. I'm going to try. Um, one that came to mind when I thought of this question is it, it's not recently, but like it's not as far away as I would like to think it is, is the concept of out of system. I come, no one ever talked to me about it as an athlete. Uh, and, you know, out of system, meaning we, you know, our pass has gone awry, either our setter doesn't have all their options available or our lib is setting or somebody else is setting the ball. Um, I mean, I know that happened. We always had plans for it as when I was an athlete or when I was a coach, but like we didn't train it. <laughs> we trained in system like 90% of the time. And I can vividly remember my anger uh, as a high school coach back in Newfoundland. There was a team that uh, just, would beat us all the time and they were way smaller than us they only had like seven or eight kids on their team they were really talented like great ball control they would beat us all the time and i had you know i was fortunate enough to have athletes on my team who were playing at the next level and doing great things with volleyball and i couldn't for the life of me figure out why they kept beating us and no matter how much i reflected it like did not clue into me until after that that well their practices were far more unstructured than mine but they, they practiced out of system like 100% of the time. Uh, and they were good at it. And we were not. We practiced in system a lot. So that was kind of one of the biggest, like, like a right angle turn in my coaching um, to realize that out of system is pretty important. And you spend most of your time in a game out of system. So you should probably mirror that in your training. So that would be a huge moment of like, duh. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? So that was big. Um, and the second one, I think it wasn't a new lesson, but reinforced. Um, just again, with like watching The Last Dance and loving sports and craving craving sports to watch, um, I think uh, it's just an incredible, you know, series to watch and, and how much the coaching staff knew their individual players and for right or for wrong, you know, did treat them differently uh, as, as they felt appropriate. And, I think one of the key things for me is always making sure that I know my athletes and I've had been fortunate to have positive relationships with athletes uh, on most of the teams that I've coached, but it kind of just reemphasizes the point that like, that's really important is to get to know your athletes, um, you know, on a professional athlete coach level, but get to know them as people, what works for them, what doesn't work for them um, and be able to kind of tweak your coaching to that and adapt as necessary. And I think the key thing out of that is just communication. And it's having it often, having creating an environment as a coach that athletes can have a trusting conversation with you, uh, be open and honest about what works and what doesn't. And, uh, you know, being open and honest as a coach coming back and saying, well, like, I'm going to try this. Like, how does that sound? Or like, you know what, you're going to have to work on this because that doesn't quite fit in or this is becoming an issue. So just having those conversations more frequently and, and uh, I think is key. So that was a good kind of, not revelation, but just encouragement that I was on the right track. Last question. My fave question. Restaurants. And you got to hit me with one that I've never been to, which I think you have one listed. So uh, I don't know. If you, well, you've never been there with me. Uh, so number one for me, uh, Bird's Nest Cafe, uh, Barrington yeah. Street in downtown Halifax. Um, pretty, pretty constant lunch spot pre-COVID. Um, <laughs> <laughs> again like it has all the coffee and, and kind of baking they do everything in house but they got two legendary for me sandwiches uh one's a meatloaf sandwich that they put on like a panini grill um hello uh Sounds and the second thing. one is like a ham it's a i think it's a brie and ham sandwich um except like the bread is like raisin bread like i don't know how it Oof. works again panini wow. in the in the grill um yeah having flashbacks here it's all it's all yum <laughs> yum yum in my tum uh second nice. going international it's not international here i'm going to truro um nook and cranny 
on Prince Street. Thank you, Carrie Peck, a uh, friend yes. of the show. We spent a lot of a lot of weekends in Truro doing Canada Games or Canada Game Cycle in 2016 and 17, and that was a constant either dinner or lunch spot. And uh, I couldn't even na- tell you what's on the menu in terms of like my favorites because I tried to have something new every time. But again, delicious, um, awesome atmosphere, and Truro it's the hub, so everyone's going to go through Truro at some time. So those are my Great. two. Yeah, Carrie definitely uh, gave us some good good places to eat in Truro that I'd only ever like gone to that like initial strip on my way somewhere else. So when we actually spent time there, there's some great places to eat and especially in that little like downtown area. So good. Okay, my two very quickly. One for the Valley, which is where I live, Church Brewing Company. It's a new restaurant. Well, it opened probably a year ago. Uh, it's in an old church. The atmosphere is amazing. It's jammed there all the time. As soon as like restaurants opened uh, on the Friday, um, since we've been in the pandemic, like church was as packed as it could be while respecting physical, you know, and health, public health guidelines. Uh, but best patio in Wolfville for sure to have a, have a beverage on. Uh, favorite top eats, best wings in Nova Scotia. I'm laying it down. Uh, as well as their tuna poke appetizer is amazing. Second restaurant, going to Newfoundland. You've been here, the Bagel Cafe. Took John and, and Carrie there actually uh, when we went to Newfoundland in 2016 uh, with provincial team and the largest portions you could ever imagine uh, for a breakfast spot. Got to get the Towton Benedict Benedict for sure. It's a top. That's a top order for me every time I go back there. But uh, a little spell, pricey for how breakfast. Do spell, but how do you spell Towton? T O U T O N. Google it. It's worth it. Houghton. Houghton. So good. I mean, I think there's like a similar thing called fried dough here. It's not the same thing. Anyway, that's my, that's my recommended eats. And I mean, if you're at Church Brewing Company, you can just go and get some Scott skins at Joe's if you really, I'm just, I'm joking. They're, they're good, but it's not Church. (laughs) People in Wolfville and the surrounding areas take their Scott skins very, very seriously. They are delicious. It's true. True. Uh, well, guys, that's it for episode seven. Uh, thanks for tuning in and, and sticking through like an hour, another hour and a half of us. Uh, but we hope you guys are able to use some of our coaching resources. If they're ones you've heard of, hopefully we, you know, showed you something new. If they were new to you, uh, then off you go and explore and enjoy. If you guys have great resources that we didn't talk about, definitely let us know. We'll add them to our coaching resource page so we can share them with everybody else in our province. Uh, but a huge thank you for tuning in. Uh, we're excited to continue to bring you more episodes in the future. Stay tuned next week for episode eight. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you get notifications. And you can definitely check out all the timestamps in this posted video if you haven't already. So thanks for joining in and we'll see you guys next week.